Hello. Thank you for having me. Good evening again, dear sisters from Better. the US of A. And uh, once again, thank you, Abby. Thank you, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, my, my voice is still a bit shaky because of that, but uh, God is good and he will see me through. Happy Valentine's, everyone. Um, let me share with you something before I go on with my uh, teaching for tonight or sharing for tonight. Who among you received a marriage proposal on your first date? Is there anyone who can raise their hand and say, I did, I did. Well, I definitely did. I received a marriage proposal on my first date. Actually, Hermie and I were supposed to prepare a presentation for the um, anniversary of the Light of Jesus community. While I was eating my dinner, I noticed that he wasn't touching his food. I said, I was getting a bit embarrassed because I, I was just really gobbling up my food. I was so hungry from the long drive from my office to where we met. Then after a while, he started to talk. And he said, you know, Ren, you know, sis, oh, see, you know, sister Reng, the Lord has been telling me that I will marry you. Then he added the plea. Please don't take it against me that I am a widower with four kids. Sisters, I almost fell off my chair. And I couldn't eat anymore. I was just dumbfounded at how bold this man was saying that the Lord has told him that he will marry me. However, since at that time, I was the head of the single sisters of LOJ, I had to follow one of the teachings that said that should a brother ask you out, a brother from community that is, ask you to go out, one should accede as a form of support for the brother and try to get to know the brother. You don't know. There might be sparks and you might be able to make a go of it. So I did, I did agree that um, I will pray. How can you say no to someone who uses a line that please pray about it and ask God's will for your for your life. See how God will lead you in this world, in this journey. So every day I had a prayer time. I had a prayer time separate from my regular prayer time just to discern if Hermie was the man that I should marry. Then one day the Lord impressed to me a verse, Matthew 3:17. I did not know that verse. It's not one of my memory verses. So I had to go and check my Bible. And lo and behold, when I opened the Bible, it said, This is my anointed son, my son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Oh, my God. I just closed my Bible and said, Lord, wrong number. How could I say yes to a man with four kids? Imagine for my very carefree life as a single woman, the moment I say I do, I would have four children. But I agreed to go and I don't know what prodded me, but I agreed to meet her me once a week. Even if we were not in a relationship, we started discussing topics like who will handle the finances, who will take care of um, disciplining the children, how to de deal with in-laws, how to spend free time, how to spend holidays. So, so many things under the sun that we thought would affect our relationship should we decide to get into one. We wanted to know each other's thoughts. We picked each other's mind on, on uh, how we thought of certain uh, topics. 
and um, we just started discussing and um, agreeing see, or seeing how, or like even how to settle arguments. I wanted to be very sure that if I say yes to her, me, it will be a yes to forever. And that I will be, accept, be able to accept his four children. They may not have, as Habi said, they may not have come out of my tummy, but they are certainly in my heart. And I can honestly say that I love my, I don't treat them as my stepchildren. They are my children, my real children, and I hold them very dear to my heart. So that's one thing I went to, wanted to make sure that, so that I was very deliberate in my prayer time in discerning whether Hermie was for me. Actually, at that time, I was, I was sent to um, a leadership training in San Francisco by Levi Strauss, whose head office was in uh, San Francisco. And there was this afternoon that we had to go through a very physically active uh, exercise. You had to partner with someone and then you'd go climb trees that were 60 to 70 feet up, cross ropes, and even zip line to the other side of the mountain. It was very physical, and I'm not an athletic type, but I went through it. And then when I went back to my hotel room to pray, the Lord went through those activities one by one. He said, you did not get scared to go through those activities because you were very sure that and you were very confident that your company took all the necessary precautions to make sure that you were safe. Your partner who went through the ropes, the activities with you is Hermie. He was there to help you when things were difficult for you, when you couldn't step up. And um, the, the people who were there cheering you on the ground, your classmates, are your brothers and sisters in community who will be there to help you when you need help, when you need uh, to be able to talk to someone. It became very clear that the Lord was telling me it was Hermie, but hard-headed that I was, or sometimes still am, I did not still obey the Lord. I did not want to say yes yet to God's very, to Hermes' very decent proposal, as he says. I asked the Lord to guard my heart that I, so that I would just be able to clearly hear if it, it's Hermes that he has, set, he has set aside for me. And believe it or not, I was praying if I would marry Hermes, but I couldn't even remember how he looked like. That's how God guarded my heart. I did not... It, it felt so weird that I was praying about this person if I would marry him, but I couldn't even remember how he looked like. God really guarded my heart. And um, the rest is history. Come April 30, we will be celebrating our 27th year, our 27th anniversary. Praise God. Praise God for just guiding me that I was able to say yes to a man who is so loving, who is so caring, and who is a great husband. Happy Valentine, sweetheart. I he's somewhere here. He's, he hears me. He can hear me. <laughs> anyway, now to our topic, nurturing the love garden. Matthew 27 verses, 20, I'm sorry, Matthew 22 verses 37 to 39. It says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Let me first tackle for let me tackle first loving God. I'm sure, sisters. When you love a person, you want to be beautiful in his eyes. You take extra care to beautify yourself, especially when you will meet him. Our desire is always to be pleasing in his eyes. We all profess that we love the Lord. And that is the very reason why we gather tonight. 
this gathering is not for me. It is not for the other sisters in LOJ. This is not for the sister who invited you, whom you cannot say no to. We gather tonight because we love the Lord and we seek to know how to love him more, to become more pleasing in his eyes. As in Matthew 6, as Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness will be added unto you. So before you can nurture the love garden, we have to make sure that our relationship with the great gardener is in order. Here are some steps how we can become a virtuous woman, a beautiful woman in God's eyes, how we can nurture the love garden. First, we need to cultivate the desire. If you want to plant something and to see it grow, it's to see it thrive, we need to cultivate it. We need to call, um, nurture it. We need to fertilize it. In Psalm 90.10, it says, The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. So imagine yourself, they say the lifespan of a person is from 70 to 80. So imagine, it's a bonus. You get up to, you get to reach your 80th birthday. You are the honorary. There's a big party in your honor. What do you want to have accomplished by the time you blow the candles on your birthday cake? If you ask me, my desire is to be a woman of character, a woman beautiful in God's eyes. And I pray, and I pray that you have the, the same desire in your hearts that you may all become beautiful in God's eyes. Give it time. This doesn't happen overnight. When we plant a seed, it takes time to let, see it grow. First, it cannot, when you plant a seed today, you don't expect to wake up to the next day to see a fruit bearing tree in your garden, to see it fully or flowers a bloom in your garden. You have to see, to wait for time to nurture it to um, make it make sure that it has to be developed. And how can you evolve in God's time? First is take time to read God's word. Make it a daily habit to read God's word. Allow me to share something I learned when we went on a visit to Israel some years back. As part of the tour, we went to a diamond factory and the guide said one step in the diamond process is to keep on polishing it. A diamond is ne not ready to be sold unless the one who polishes it can see the image, his image on the diamond. We are like diamonds in God's eyes unless God allows us to polish us through his word we, he, we, our inner beauty will not be revealed. Remember, for those who know the Novena to God's Love, there's one line there that says, Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. That is how the image of the one who polishes us can be. Um, seen in us, can be reflected in us if we know God's word, if we read it daily. It's also important, and I will encourage you on this. I strongly encourage you on this. Take time to memorize God's words. These words you can recall when the going gets rough, when the going gets tough. Hold on to God's word. The holding on to God's word can give you strength when things become difficult, it helps prevent us from having those worry lines on our faces. 
women don't want to see to have lines, worry lines on our faces. Because with these words in us, we know that God will receive it true, see us true. It is very important that we are anchored in God's word. Read scripture. Soak yourself in God's word. God has about 3,500 promises in the Bible. Promises to help you when you are in doubt, when you are depressed, when you are in need. Uh, try to recall our worship song. It says, I believe in your word. I believe in your promise. How can we do that when we don't know what is God's word, when we don't know what is promise, what his promise is, what he is offering to us? How can he reveal his love for us when we don't read his love letters to us? Let me share some of them, my favorite verses. One is Romans 8.28. And we know that God causes us, uh, causes all things to work together for good, those who love God, to those who are called according to, her, to its purpose. Another um, verse that I really love and hold on whenever I'm going through something is from 1 Corinthians 10.13. It says, God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond your power to remain firm. And if he does, he will provide you with a way out. So no matter what I, problem I may have, I know God will provide me with a way out. And if there seems to be scarcity in some things that we need, I, I claim the words of God of, in, in Philippians um, Chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply all my needs according to the riches of his glory. Aren't those words so beautiful? And last one, last one of what I could say, one of my most favorite verses is from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You know, when I was diagnosed with cancer in um, the last quarter of 2018, there were days that I was really down. There would be days that I'd really feel so low. And one day that I really remember when I felt so sad because I went to meet my uncle and my surgeon after my surgery and uh, they said that they got 27 lymph nodes and 19 of those were positive for cancer. I, so many things just came into my mind. I said, oh my God, what would happen to her? Me? What would happen to the children? I felt so low. But then the Lord gave me the word from Romans 8, 18, and it says, the pain that you are feeling right now is nothing compared to the joy that is coming. So even if at that time, my stage two cancer, what was brought up to stage three, there was so much hope in my heart. I was, I, I just had the urge to just go on fighting, to go on living. Whenever I go for my chemotherapy, imagine, huh? let me go backtrack for a while. Imagine, before my surgery, I had four chemo sessions every three weeks. After a month after my surgery, I had to go through chemo sessions every week. But God sustained me through all of this. I never felt any of the weaknesses that people say, throwing up, dizziness. Of course, there were days, maybe on the third or fourth day after my chemo, I'd feel easily tired. But that was it. When I'd go to the cancer certain center for my treatments, I'd see people whose skin were turning gray or even turning black. But I had none of this. My 
my face, if I may say so, hardly changed. I lost my hair, but it grew back. And I'm even happier with my hair now. So God has really been so good. He has been faithful. And it was just because I knew that I was holding on to his word. What I'd always envisioned would be, he would be stretching out his hand to hold me. I am not the one holding on to him because if I were the one, I might let go. But God, I knew, would never let go of my hand. I would also encourage you to spend time with other women. Surround yourself with women who could help you grow spiritually, who could uh, help you walk in the path that uh, God has prepared for you. In, um, in today's session, I see a lot of women whom I've known for so many years. Ate Bebo, Tita Rory, who are with me in our, in our LG. And then um, sisters who were with me when we were single. Sister Merle, Sister Nori, Sister Del, Sister Jo, who was even one of the teachers of one of my sons. And um, there are women, these are women that I know I can run to whenever I have a problem, whenever I have a concern. It would just be a message away. And I would receive affirmation, confirmation that they will be with me. I had mom friends from my son's school and they were, oh, I know my prayer warriors. I had a friend would even go to the hospital to, the hospital to stay with me when I was having my sessions. God provided this kind of support because I called on him. There were people who came to show my lo their love, to show their care, and to just assure me of God's love and God's healing. And today, the joy that God promised, I am experiencing. Ever since I was done with my treatments in, on June, 2019, all my treatments showed that I have no metastasis, that there are no cancer cells anymore in my body. And I ask for your prayers that for another two and a half years, please continue to pray for me that God, that I may be fully declared cancer free, that I may be able to live for him more, to serve him, and to just be with, enjoy time with my family and my sisters in Christ. It would be also good to take time to read spiritual books, read the lives of saints, read books that can help you grow in your journey. We, there, there are a lot of books that people write wherein we can emulate and just grow in, in terms of loving the Lord, and some of this, I ha um, some of my favorite authors are Elizabeth George, who wrote A Woman After God's Own Heart. I don't know how many times I've read this book. I keep on reading it, A Woman After God's Own Heart by Elizabeth George. It just helps me in my journey. There is also Stormy Martian, who uh, wrote The Power of a Praying Woman. The Power of a Praying Wife. The Power of a Praying Parent. So whatever phase you may be in your life, there are books that will really be able to help you. That um, you may just be able to grow more in loving God, in serving Him, and in living for Him. Again, in Matthew 22, the la uh, verse 30, 39 says, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Part of our love garden is the circle we move in. It's not only God, but it's also our family, our friends. And how do we nurture this? Let me share a verse from uh, Song of Songs from chapter 2, verse 15. And it says, catch the foxes for us, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards or the garden while our vineyards are in bloom. 
you know, I've always pictured foxes as big, fierce animals who try to steal sheep or style, try to steal animals in the farm. But there are foxes, small, sly foxes, who bury them, borrow themselves underground in the vineyards. And they gnaw on the vines, on the roots of the vineyards. And this cannot be seen from above. These are happening all underneath the ground. And nothing is visible until you realize that everything has been destroyed. The fruits keep falling and you see your garden dying. We all know that our true vine in our lives is Jesus. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me, you will bear fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So if we let little foxes know at the roots and destroy the vineyard, we will stray apart. We will fall, fall apart from our vine and we will lose our connection with God. So how do we stay connected to Jesus and to our loved ones so that we may bear fruit and not fall away from him? What do we need to do to nurture our love for God and for one another? I would say we need to slay the little foxes in our lives that cause us to stray away from Jesus and to put our stray in our relationship with him and with our loved ones. I am sure that Christians that we are, no one has killed anybody. No one amongst us has robbed a bank or set a house on fire. We know what the big sins are. And I am sure we have stayed away from this because we know the Lord, that the Lord will be displeased. It is the little foxes that we need to look out for. We are not aware that these little foxes knows into our relationships. These are the sins of the spirit that creep slowly into our lives, almost unnoticed that we become used to it, that eventually they will spoil the vine and destroy the fruit. And this can be described as heart sins, as tongue sins, and as behavior sins. These are the little foxes that we don't notice can draw us away from the Lord and from our loved ones. What are examples of heart scenes? It says one of them is ingratitude. You, you can never appreciate what you have. You always complain. You are unhappy. I was guilty of this many years back before I get, became sick. There was a time we decided not to get any house help because the kids were grown up and uh, I was not working anymore at that time. So housewives, or all of us know, housework is never ending. There will always be something to do in the house. Excuse me for a while. <clears throat> There was my time that my husband was into boxing. <clears throat> so he'd let his trainer come early in the morning. He would box. After that, he would have a massage. And then when he's done with that, sits at the table and says, I have to eat now because I'm going. I have to go to the office or I have a meeting. And I was boiling inside. Doesn't this guy notice that I am so tired? I've been doing all the work all this time while, while he was exercising, was he was, was, while he was having a massage. I was really burning inside. There was a time I felt so sorry for myself. How come he doesn't notice that I'm so busy out here and just, he just sits at the table and asks to be served? There, so there I was sinning, getting angry at my husband. But please note, huh? I just want to clarify. Notice that I am talking in the past tense because 
he is so helpful now. <laughs> he, he has finally learned how to turn on the stove, how to turn on the toaster, how to use the washing machine, but not cook. Doesn't know how to use the microwave. <laughs> so, but I am so blessed that I have, I have Fermi. I, I read an article, I came across an article that really helped me shift my paradigm. It says that I have to be thankful for everything. Learn to appreciate. A grateful heart is a happy heart. So I started thinking, thinking of all the good traits that my husband has. He is a good husband, a loving father. He, he um, makes sure that we are, we are well provided for. He makes sure that he comes home at night. He comes home to me and not to anyone else's house. He is a faithful servant of God. So how can I not be thankful for that? He has raised that we... He has uh, raised the children well, and he gave us good children. We have a lot to be thankful for, big things and small things. But sometimes we do not get to see them because we are so blinded by our heart scenes. Covetousness. Do you always want to have new things? Do you secretly wish to have what your friends have? How come they have such a big, beautiful house? How can she afford to buy a Hermes bag? How come she has a boyfriend? I'm prettier than her. I'm much nicer than her, but I don't have one. I've been wanting to have a boyfriend for so long. Why? So these are all things that we sometimes harbor in our hearts and we don't realize it. It makes us unhappy. It knows into our relationship with God. Another sin is in a pride. Why do you do certain things? Why do you dress up? Do you dress to impress? Do you talk, why do we talk this way? Is it to bring out that we are more intelligent? We are more talented? We need to check ourselves from time to time. There was a time I heard someone say, I don't want to serve anymore. How come she was appointed as an LG head when I have been in community much longer than she? Or maybe, like, why was she tapped to join the music ministry? I have a better singing voice than her. I sing better than her. But I am never chosen. It's important. Check your heart out. See what's there. What's making you sad? What's making you angry? What is eating at the roots of your vineyard that can cause you to fall? Next, we also have tongue sins. And in James chapter 3, verses 4 to 5, it says, Consider the ships. Though they are strong, though so the um, although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants them to go. Likewise, the tongue is so small a part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider a great forest fire. It is set on fire by a very small spark. The tongue can be very, the tongue I think is the smallest muscle we have. But it can create a lot of trouble. It can cause us a lot to sin. And what are some of the examples that causes us to sin. Among Filipinos, this is very common. Negative humor. When you see someone putting on weight, you say, hey, did somebody let you loose in the kitchen? You seem to have been enjoying your time at the kitchen. 
or when somebody is happy to share with you something they made, it's like, ah, was that made by with your hand or with your foot? Showing that it was you're not really impressed by what she showed. We like to make fun or poke fun at others regarding their weight, their looks, their gender, or their racial background, all under the guise of a joke. So when other laugh, others laugh, we feel affirmed. Yes. We feel justified. However, the target person might be smiling outside, but deep inside, she is hurting. Her confidence is undermined. We can get used to these kinds of jokes under the guise of saying, it's just a joke. I didn't mean it. It's nothing serious. Humor should be uplifting. It should be positive and it honors differences. It is gentle spirited. Another tongue sin is backbiting. A bite. A backbiter is someone who uses his lips, his lips and tongue against someone when the person is not around and is unable to defend himself or herself. It can include gossiping, not verifying the truth as long as it is juicy. Or maybe in the guise of a prayer, hey sister, why don't we pray for so, sister so and so? I think she has a concern. I think she's going out with a married man. Things like that. In the guise of asking for prayers for a sister, you might be indulging in gossip and not be conscious of it. Another sin of the tongue is contentious words. Something that can spark a controversy or an argument. Hey, you know what? I think she's jealous of you. I think you should know what she said about you. Things like that. Or I definitely won't let her get away this with this. She will get it from me. She will definitely get and experience my wrath. So what do we say? We say, speak only what is sweet, what is pleasant. Only what is kind and wise. And another type of sin is behavior sins. This sometimes we are not conscious of. One is impatience. You want things done and immediately. Sometimes in the office, you get frustrated with the subordinate. Or maybe in the house, you, you get frustrated when you ask somebody to, to do something for you. But it cannot be done immediately. You want it done fast. You want it done now. And you cannot even understand what the other person, or you don't even try to understand what the other person is trying to say or why, or explaining what, why she cannot, be, why she's unable to do it now. All you are concerned about is that you want it done and you want it done now. Bad temperament. You get easily annoyed or anger with even the small things. If someone cuts the line and gets ahead of you, you will definitely, she will, the person will definitely get that look from you, that glare. And if looks could kill, that person could be dead. Or if someone cuts you on the road, overtakes you, you try to get back. Try to overtake him again and just stay in front of him. Make him suffer. You respond in a surly manner. So how do you handle how, how do you handle behavior scenes? One is master your tolerance. What do you mean by this tolerance? It means master also your endurance. This will give you the ability to go. When the going gets tough, I'd like to reiterate this is the time you can use the verses that you have memorized. Use God's words to face you, to face the difficult circumstances you have before you. With this in mind, we acknowledge 
the resources we have in the Lord. You can forge ahead, you can move on, and you will not give or quit because you know God is with you. Instead of letting our emotions to get the better of us, we can be strong because God has fully equipped us and he has our promises. One is also to master your temper. I try to practice this by making a list of what irritates me. Little things. The cap on the toothpaste was not put back. Water bottles in the fridge have not been replenished. Little things that irritate you. So when you start feeling, when I start feeling that I am starting to react to certain situations at, at home that can make me explode or angry, I take it off and I try to calm myself down. I try to tell myself everything will be good. I don't mind, allow my emotions to get the better of me. So how do we deal with the foxes in our lives? First, very important, you should not mind the foxes in others' lives. Focus the foxes in our lives. Foxes, foxes that are slowly eroding our relationship with, Lord, with the Lord, our relationship with those who are around us, those we love. Do not conform to the standards of the word. Here are some tips. Very important that you have a personal prayer time. Spend time with the Lord. Spend time with him. Sit at his lap, at his feet, and wait for him to talk to you. I, it also helped me to keep a journal of what God tells me during my quiet time. And when there's something bothering me, I go back. I look back at what the Lord has promised me, at what he has assured me. Look for a mentor, a sister, not a brother, but a sister who can help you, a sister whom you can trust. Ask for her help to address your weaknesses. You can open up to that, make sure you can open up to that person and trust her. Share your weaknesses. It will always be easier to overcome weaknesses when you have somebody accountable too. Let someone help you to do that. A sister in your light group, a dear friend, an older woman in community whom you know will help be able to help you. With us strongly attached to the branch, we are sure that we will bear fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. As it says in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. We will not die, nor will we wither. Instead, we will prosper in God's garden. For some people, this may sound so difficult. How will I be able to do all of this at the same time? But then again, our garden is nurtured over time. And as St. Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength, to cry through Christ who gives me strength. Sisters, Anchor yourselves in God's word. Be with one another. Share God's word. Live God's word. And see how will you will grow. How, will you, how you will be nurtured. And how you will have that very fruitful relationship. A relationship with God that is full of, fully a bloom and full of his love. God bless you. And I hope that... With my sharing, you will be able to grow in God's love, grow in God's garden, to be able to nurture that love for God, to be able to nurture that love for one another. God bless you. Have a good night.